Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson and I'm at Mammoth Cave National Park. This park is host to the largest cave system in the entire world and is home to over 130 different species of plants and animals. It's also home to some amazing geologic formations, including stalactites, stalagmites, gypsum formations, and underground rivers. But how did this system form? Time to do a little exploring and find out. limestone that formed around 330 million years ago. Limestone is the sedimentary rock that's easily dissolved in water, which is how this cave system formed. Here to tell me exactly how that happened is my friend Rachel Bosch, a geologist at the University of Cincinnati who researches how caves form. Hey Rachel, how are you doing? Hi Chris, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. So explain to me how does water create a cave system like the one we're in? Well, it takes several steps. The water is all coming from hundreds of feet up above us okay. when it rains on the surface. And as that water comes down through the soil, it's picking up little bits of carbon dioxide. There are animals in the soil. The animals are breathing in oxygen. They're breathing out carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide combines with the water and makes a weak acid called carbonic acid. Carbonic acid, OK. And as the water brings the carbonic acid down through the soil and down into the rocks, it hits the limestone and it reacts with the limestone. It starts dissolving away the limestone, kind of eating away at it. And eventually, over time, it erodes out larger and larger passages. And it can start bringing in little rocks. And those can bang into the sides and make the passages even bigger until over thousands and millions of years, you can get passages as big as the ones that we're in today. So how long has Mammoth Cave been forming? Mammoth Cave has been forming for about the past five million years. Five million, so it took five million years of water breaking this down to, to create a, a cave system this big. It did. So the passage we're in right now can show us ways in which it's changing. There's water flowing in through the ceiling yeah. right over here. And you can see that that little hole there, it gets larger and larger over time as that water just cuts its way back, almost like a waterfall on the surface. It's just like, yeah, it's, it's, so, it's so over time, that's gonna move further and further back. Mm -hmm. Boy, if you sit here long enough, it really makes you wanna pee. <laughs> Now, there, you said there, as, as we go down to lower, lower levels, there's water flowing through the, the cave system as we speak, right? Yes. Can we go down there and take a look? Yeah, let's do that. All right, let's do it. All right, so Rachel, where, where are we now? So we are at the shores of River Styx. The River Styx. The River Styx. It sounds ominous, doesn't it? Does. It does. <laughs> so we're in the very lowest level of Mammoth Cave where new passages are forming right now. So this is the very youngest area of the so, cave. So this, this river here is, is carving out new parts of the cave as we speak? Yes. That is crazy. Isn't it? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's just like any other river. It's just hundreds of feet underground. Right. It's just, it, it starts on the surface. It's a river flowing along the surface. It goes into a sinkhole and then you have the river underground. So it's just like a surface river, but it's got a roof. What is that landscape called and how does that work? So it's called a karst landscape. Okay. And the one big difference you can see between karst and other humid area landscapes is that um, in other landscapes, and you know, in the wet eastern United States, you'll have water flowing in a lot of streams on the surface, feeding the main river. So you mm -hmm. have the main river, and you have its tributaries, and you can see all these tributaries on the surface, streams and waterfalls. If you come to then a karst region, like central Kentucky, like most of Tennessee, a lot of West Virginia, these areas 
don't have those surface strands. So how does physical weathering, like in this river, help form the cave like this? So the physical weathering part would be the fact that all of these materials in here, we can see there's a bunch of, this is a pretty big piece of gravel. Yeah. You know, so. It's got a lot of sand too. And like there's clay. Got, yeah, there's got a lot of sand, silt, clays, yeah. all these different grain sizes. These are not dissolving in the cave. This is traveled from outside of the cave. Oh, this came from outside the that cave. That came from outside the cave. That's made out of sandstone. Okay. Oh. So this wasn't limestone like it is here. It's it was transported here by the river. Yes. Oh, Alan, I can imagine if like this is tumbling on the bottom of the river, it's going to knock some other things loose. Exactly. Interesting. So as as millions of years over a really long time, all these little rocks and pebbles like this help break down other pieces of rock within the cave because the river is carrying them and it's kind of using it to kind of bump and and shape and you know carve out a whole cave system. Right, almost like a sandblaster. Chemical weathering is when air, water, or living things break down rock through a chemical reaction. Here at Mammoth Cave, most of the chemical weathering is done by water. That's because when it rains, the water absorbs some carbon dioxide from the atmosphere in the soil, making it slightly acidic. When that rainwater seeps into the ground and comes in contact with the rock, it reacts with it, breaking it down. You can reproduce this reaction at home by placing a few drops of acid like lemon juice or vinegar on some limestone. That fizzing you see is gas being given off by the acid as it reacts with the limestone. Geologists use this test in the field to test the type of rock they're studying. If the rock fizzes, it's limestone. Chemical weathering is a big part of how caves like this form. Slightly acidic water reacting with the rock, breaking it down, and forming a cave. Chemical and physical weathering are major factors in how caves are formed and the changing surface of our Earth. Next time you're at Mammoth Cave National Park, or next time you're just outside, see if you can identify some examples of physical and chemical weathering. Before we go, I want to thank Rachel Bosch for being our guide through this cave system and explaining how it formed. I also want to thank Mammoth Cave National Park for allowing us to tell their story to kids and adults everywhere. And lastly, I want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Science Around Cincy. Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson and I'm at Actually, back to one I zoomed out too early. <laughs> <laughs> Placing a few drops of